हेलो कैन यू गाइस हियर मी इन द बैक ऑसम सो गुड आफ्टरनून ऑल थैंक यू फॉर अटेंडिंग दिस टॉक एंड थैंक यू फॉर टर्निंग आउट इन द लार्ज नंबर रियली एंकरेजिंग माई नेम इज़ यश मॉन्कट आई एम अ सॉफ्टवेयर इंजीनियर इन द वर्चुअलाइजेशन टीम फॉर रेड हैट आई वर्क आउट आई वर्क आउट ऑफ द बेस्ट फॉर ऑफिस एंड माई को प्रेजेंट टूडे इज यूकाश ही इज ऑल्सो सॉफ्टवेयर इंजीनियर इन द वर्चुअलाइजेशन टीम ही वर्क रिमोट फॉर द ब्रनो ऑफिस एंड टूडे वी आर गन बी टॉकिंग अबाउट आवोकाडो एंड जेंकिस टेस्ट ऑटोमेशन एंड कंटिन्यूस कंटिन्यूस इंटीग्रेशन सो वॉट आर वी गोइंग टू लर्न today uh, i'm going to cover the development process followed by the libvirt and qmukvm uh, qmukvm communities and the problems uh, faced by the development team in a way to uh, support the process we are going to talk in particular about the patch uh, uh, handling of patches the handoffs between the development and the quality engineering groups and uh, some of the issues with the test uh, test test automation efforts uh, within the team uh we are oh sorry sorry uh we are then going to discuss uh, how we are using jenkins to uh, uh, address some of those uh, issues and the approach we took in uh, integrating the test automation efforts within the ci setup within the development process and the ch and the ch uh, challenges we faced in doing the same Uh, I then have a small demo where I'm going to show you how all of these things work together. Lucas will then take over, and he's going to be talking about the basics of Avocado and the developments that have been made over the last uh, few months. And even he has a small demo lined up for you guys. So let's begin. Uh, let's begin by uh, discussing a general overview of the development process followed by several open source projects, but uh, Libvirt and QMUKVM in particular. So, say you are a developer who's found a bug. What do you usually do? If you know how to fix the bug, you write a patch and you send a mail to an upstream mailing list. The the mailing list then sort of moves the patch. to a patch queue which in simple terms is just a text file containing all the list of patches that have come in say in a given given time frame the patches are then moved from the patch queue and they are uh, applied to the source code and a build is run now the reason for running the build is that uh, we want to make sure that any changes introduced by your patch or the developer's patch does not break any existing features in the code if the build is successful it is then moved on to quality engineering work for the testing well seems simple enough then why are we changing it let's look at some of the issues in the same workflow now the developers need to follow a very strict guideline when they are submitting patches to a mailing list the, these might be in the form of running diffs or uh, writing extensive descriptions or taking part in code reviews and a uh, similar set of guidelines applies to patch queues now if uh, uh, if these guidelines are not followed then they might uh, result in either build failure or faulty builds which adds more time to the process now on on uh, on on uh, on top of this uh, the mailing list is usually administered by a group of maintainers selected by the community and in most of the uh in most of the cases it is the maintainer's job to manually move the patches from the mailing list to a patch queue apply the patches and then run builds this manual intervention in the development process adds further delay to an already sort of a slow process another major drawback of the uh, of the process is the handoff between development and qe now in most major uh, major Uh, major organizations development and qe are treated as two completely separate functional groups so they have their own schedules their own testing guidelines own uh, deadlines to submit stuff uh, which which results in the fact that when a developer has submitted a patch it might take weeks for qe to test it and get back with the results which mean which means by the time the developer has the qe results he has long moved on to work on uh, work on something else all of this results in really slow turnaround times on tests moving on from uh, qe to test uh, test automation now the the 
The QE team that supports our development group has a testing framework that is based on the auto test framework. Uh, for people in the room who do not know what auto test is, it's an open source testing framework for the for the kernel. Uh, however, auto test is no longer maintained 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 upstream, uh, which means that if something breaks within the within the QE testing framework. There is no way to support all the wide variety of tools that they are currently running on top of the framework. So these were m m most of the issues, the major issues. So uh, how did we approach the solution? Uh, we uh, we wanted to reduce the turnaround times uh, and get uh, faster results back in the hands of the developers. So we wrote a script that that. Uh, automates the initial stages of the development process uh, once a patch is submitted. This script parses the mailing list. It gets the patches, run, uh, gets the patches into a patch queue, applies the patches, runs a build, and if if the builds break, the the developers can go and have a look at the builds, uh, build logs to see what went wrong. Was it an issue in the patch or was it an issue? somewhere in the workflow. Uh, now, uh, this script is very similar to FAMZANG's PatchU, which is an upstream tool which is available for QMU patch testing. The link for it can be seen on the slide. Uh, we then moved our focus to the handoff between uh, development and QE. And that's where uh, Jenkins comes in. Uh, as you've seen in several talks yesterday and probably today as well. Jenkins is a very versatile tool. Uh, so the way that we have it uh, set up is that we have a Jenkins master slave that is responsible for getting the latest, uh, latest, latest RPMs, uh, installing the repos, and running tests on, on top of it. So given the, so given, uh, given the script that we already have, in, in in theory, the way that our CI is set up is that the script takes care of patch handling. It applies, it gets the patches, applies the patches, and runs the build, which triggers the CI to install the latest uh, version, run the test, hand it off to QE, and uh, generate all sorts of uh, results and reports. So where does Avocado fit in? Because I haven't talked about it at all. So I know Lucas is going to cover more about it in uh, detail, but to put it simply, Avocado is based on Autotest, and 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 uh, Autotest is the framework that is used by our QE team. So if we use a, a testing tool that is used by our QE team in the development process, two things happen. The uh, the first thing is that if the test passes, the developers have get very good reliable feedback and they can have enough confidence in their patch or their code that okay if it passes the initial stages of the same testing framework it might go on all the way and pass uh, pass QE as well and the second thing is that it takes some of the uh, burden off of QE's hands now as most of you in the room might know QE has three different tiers of testing there's the unit and the sanity test there's the functional and the acceptance test and there's the regression tests so if, uh, as a development team, we can even perform just the sanity test at our end, it takes at least tens of hours of testing time from QE. Uh, and well, they have more time to run more tests. Uh, so as of now, all of our Jenkins slave, they are only uh, x86 based. But we would eventually like to move to, uh, mo uh, we would uh, like to include uh, power PC and ARM as well. Uh, so now, uh, the I would actually like to show you the scripts that are responsible for generating our uh, Jenkins jobs. So this is this is a very small script that we run on our m uh, master, which is responsible for uh, creating the jobs. Now we. Sw uh, we switch to the user Jenkins and we run a script called create avocado jobs. And we pass it, let's look at the only four files that, four major files that we pass it. We 
pass it a list of tests that we wanted to run. Uh, this is the name of the tab uh, that will be uh, created in Jenkins, and we pass it to Git repos. So now let's look at the test list that we pass it. Now uh, I'm just going to scroll through it quickly, and you can uh, glance at the names of the files. So there is CPU, there's destroy, there's all the VM tests, uh, there's migrate, then there's network, netflow, nodes, pools. Uh, so the way that it works is that this is the main script that, that takes care of everything. I know it's a little large. Uh, just bear with me here. I'm, I'm not going to explain the entire script, but just the major part. Now, this is the main XML part that creates the master job, which triggers all the other jobs. And if so this is responsible for things like when the test will when the jobs will be uh, when the jobs will be triggered so uh, this is very similar to a cron tab when you pass it a time of when you want the test to run so i'm going to switch to this view where i have the the main job open so this master job is basically responsible to create a job that's called word test upstream and all the fields uh, all the fields that you can see here are filled in by the XML. So you can see here, this is the, uh, it, it, this trigger, see, this is a, a trigger tag, which basically populates this, ta this field over here. Similarly, we have fields below, which populate this list of tests to run which is generated, again, using this list. Then, oh, sorry. Then the uh, build job, I'm just going to highlight a few things, has the Git, Git plugins. And it is responsible for things like uh, removing any old installations of libvirt and uh, getting the new RPMs and installing the latest uh, latest versions. So this is the job. Oops, this is the job that is created. So it has two two Git repos where it uh, fetches the latest builds from. And as as you can see, the the first uh, shell removes the any old uh, any old installations of libvirt, and the next install the uh, latest uh, libvirt. Yeah, sorry. Uh, yes, uh, so <laughs> that's a good question. And these scripts existed before uh, we started using Jenkins for all of our products. So li the libvirt project had a CI, which was which was already using the scripts. And we wanted to just uh, uh, integrate our efforts into the same. So we do not want to uh, remove everything and then start anew. So we just uh, modify the scripts to have Avocado as well. And which is uh, sort of what I'm covering right now. So the test job basically takes, takes, takes care of that. If you look at the command tag, that runs the, uh, that runs the uh, Avocado jobs. So, uh, so here, in, in this place, we were running uh, auto test and word test before we sort of migrated to Avocado. So that's how it was. Yeah. XMLs. Yeah. So eventually, we are going to move to Jenkins Job Builder, but uh, this is how it was set up. So we have just uh, edited right now. I know, I, I agree with you. That's true. Yeah. Oops. Oops. 
sorry. Yeah, okay. Right. Uh, so I'm going to now move on to the few of the uh, few of the challenges that we faced in our team. Uh, as I said, uh, the Libert project already has an had an existing CI which needed to be upgraded and 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 integrated with. Uh, with 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 Avocado without affecting any features that were all uh, without without affecting any features that were already there, and so we decided to stick with the XML scripts that were there, and uh, the same CI supports both upstream and uh, uh, downstream for now, so we will move to Jenkins Job in the future. I can't really say when, but it is there in the pipeline, and the script that is used. Uh, it had to be m modified for the setup for uh, the QMU KVM CI because that project operates in a slight, slightly different way upstream and downstream as compared to Libvirt. Uh, and the migration from Autotest to Avocado uh, has been a tricky one because Avocado is developing really quickly and uh, we had to sort of catch up with it. So it's, that's taking time as well. And I would now like to pass it on to Lukas, who's going to talk about Avocado. OK. I hope, it's, I, I hope you hear me. Uh, so why Avocado? Well, because uh, for us, it was like the only possible choice for virtualization, as it inherited all virtual tests which contains like 40,000 QMU and almost 60,000 liver tests. It has support for three major R CPU architectures, uh, lots of versions of operating systems, and like uh, almost 900 hardware vari uh, like plot like variants, like different kinds of hardware, which gives you this humongous number of, uh, of theoretical combination you can, you can run. I'm sorry. Uh, so, that's basically why we use that, but, but why you should maybe consider using Avocado 2 or uh, what, what else is there. Uh, so basically, uh, it talks to Jenkins. You already saw, uh, saw the result, results from Yash. Uh, but what else? Uh, one thing is that uh, unlike Autotest, it's quite simple to set up because we provide, uh, for Fedora and, and RHEL, we provide uh, YAM repositories. Uh, we also supply uh, support Ubuntu. And uh, you can download, it's a Python project, so you can basically just download the sources and uh, install it on your system. Uh, so it's just as simple as YAM install Avocado. And hopefully it downloads. Uh, and now I, I should be able to run Avocado without any any pre rules knowledge? So, Avocado. Oh, you don't see the. Oh, which one? Yeah. This one, yeah. Uh, avocado run. Let's try running something. Like I, I'm, I'm here for the first time, so let's let's try to run something, and voila, it it works. So no no need to set anything. <laughs> So it's, it's basically as simple that even even our developers, not QA, but even some developers are running it or at least playing with it uh, because it gives them some additional features, uh, like basically the tests. But uh, we hope that to give them uh, other things too. You'll see that later. Uh, as you can see, you can run any bi uh, arbitrary binary. Uh, how it works, let's try something more something harder. Yeah, it works basically the way that uh, if it returns zero, then it passed. It, if there's a uh, non-zero, it, it failed. Uh, this is when you use any arbitrary file. Uh, we also support uh, native uh, test format, which is inherited from uh, unit test, uh, Python unit test. So if you're familiar with Python unit tests, you, you, you probably know how to write uh, tests for us. And you get some additional features. Uh, I'll show you some of them soon. Uh, so let's extend this script. Uh, let's try something more, more complex like echo Red Hat. Maybe it'll work. I also have uh, Avocado example uh, tests installed, so I can simply test run some tests. Uh, And 
I think that's, that's enough, right? So you can see different stages. Oh, we, do have, we do also have support for errors, uh, but I, I don't think you need to see it. So you can see, uh, even just by running this, you see the results immediately, uh, nice and shiny with some overall results. And there is a link to some HTTP page so let's have a look at that. Oh, sorry. Oh, I can't have a look at that because I'm inside VM, sorry. Uh, so let me run it again on my computer. So there are some uh, results. This is basically f not for QA or, or continuous integration. This is basically for developers or, or people like you uh, who just want to run tests. You see again uh, the results. You can even see uh, the reason of why the test failed or passed uh, over here. And you have the links to each test debug log. So let's have a look at, at the Red Hat, what it, dot, it did. was basically, yes, I'm running echo command and it locks the standard output. Pretty simple, right? Uh, so what else do you have? Uh, and this is actually quite important. Uh, I run this job today, but do I know what, what kernel I run? Yes, I know it. Uh, but do I know it in, in a week, in a month, when I, for example, discovered that these uh, results were quite important for me, but, but I forgot to lock uh, what, was I, what was I running? So what we do is uh, we lock some system in informations uh, before and after each job, uh, optionally even before each job, uh, each test. And I can have a look at like what is my kernel and, or what packages do I have installed and everything. Uh, it's configurable uh, quite simply and uh, it helps to identify like problems later. Uh, if I take a look at the results itself without the HTML, you can see that there is a HTML uh, output. Uh, there is an ID file, which is important concept, uh, because each test in Avocado gets the, uh, this ID. Uh, we do have support for server, uh, Avocado server part, uh, where you can push and pull from results, so an easy way to share, uh, share results, uh, and do some data mining on the server. Uh, because, well, yeah, well, you run the test on your machine, but you want to gather the results somewhere. Uh, again, it's optional. You get the overall job log, which collects lots of information and, and uh, data. Then you have re job replay directory, uh, which logs like all the pieces needed to rerun this job later, uh, including configuration and parameters. Then you have uh, JSON and XML results, uh, which are basically human readable results, uh, or not human, I'm sorry, uh, machine readable results. Uh, and the sysinfo, as I said before, we have pre post and profile, which are uh, basically any uh, code which, which run throughout the, uh, the execution, like profilers to see, uh, for example, free memory during the execution. Uh, then we have the test. Uh, Results structure uh, where you get again are some files which are given and it's the debug log standard output and standard error of all executed binaries. So uh, if you run some binaries inside your test, it runs them and logs the standard output and standard error. You can see redhead here. And we do have a whiteboard concept uh, which uh, is basically for you. You just write there anything you want. It's used by performance team to store uh, data for later data, data mining and uh, some uh, post processes. Uh, so this is very quickly uh, the result structure, which is quite important because uh, uh, it, it's like it's given to you and you can uh, rely on it. We will keep it uh, in since like all, all the time and you can build scripts on top of it. Uh, on top of them. But let's have a look at, uh, at the features of Avocado itself. Uh, so we do support some subcommands. Uh, I can't cover everything here, and it's not even intended. But let's have a look at at least what, what it can provide to you. I mean, yes, you can run it in CI, but the thing is, if you run it in CI 
and you discover a problem, you probably want to rerun it on your computer. Uh, and there, there are some handy things we, we came up with. So basically the usage is, is simple. You just uh, add some positional arguments uh, and uh, it runs them as, as tests. Uh, we do have some dry run, optional arguments like dry run if you just want to see what parameters will be used. Uh, job timeout to avoid hangs. Uh, we have some output uh, formats like uh, silent, which is not that much useful, but uh, you can like produce, for example, JSON, uh, run avocado from your, your scripts and parse the output uh, from standard output and react on it. We do have uh, output check uh, record and uh, check support because we saw many programs, uh, ma many like tests only, okay, run this and check whether the, the standard output change or standard error. So you get a native support for that. You just run a uh, check record output and the next time it, it uh, always checks, uh, checks whether the output changed. Uh, as I told you before, we have various types of tests like the simple test or, or, uh, or the native test. Uh, we also have uh, external runner, which is again a great concept uh, if you already have, uh, have some uh, binary which, which calls your tests. This was actually designed for KVM unit test, which is a script uh, which by default runs lots of tests and gives you true false whether, it, whether some of them failed or, or, uh, or, or passed. Uh, okay, this is dark, like overall result, but if you run the same uh, script and add an, op and an argument uh, with a test name or ID, uh, it runs just a single, uh, single job. So what you can do with Avocado is provide this external runner and then all arguments become arguments of, of that uh, binary, uh, which means uh, you, run it individ you run this test individually uh, and you get this result individually even in the CI or, or anywhere else you, you may want to uh, with some additional options. Uh, multiplexer, this is a key concept and if, if anything you want to take from this presentation is that uh, you should take a, a look at the multiplexer. Uh, it's a way to specify parameters to uh, your tests. Uh, you may know like metrics uh, of tests or sparse metrics in some way like Jenkins has it or other frameworks. Uh, but I haven't seen something like this. It, it comes actually from a Cartesian config. Now we created even better sub, uh, way with the multiplexer. Uh, we don't just specify axes and filters, but we specify a tree structure and say that you want to multiplex these children. And then you create another, like it, it's recursive, so you can create another layer. So you define the filters by creating the structure. And it's actually really human readable. So Check this out on our pages and uh, either reuse our code, we, we are very happy to share with you, or use Avocado. Uh, another thing, uh, not for CI, but uh, probably for developers, is uh, that you can uh, easily execute tests on, uh, on a remote machine, uh, which means uh, it SSH to that machine, it copies the test from your local copy there, runs them, and reports results locally to your computer. Uh, including libvirt support, so we can actually sp uh, warm up the machine and, uh, and run it for you. And another neat concept, again, th this is something we, we want to add uh, to developers, uh, so they, are, they use the same tool as, C as uh, QA, is wrapper and GDB support. What I mean by, by that is that you run a test which executes a binary uh, and it interacts with, the, with this binary. But you know that there may be some problem in, in some areas. So we just say, okay, run the test, but this time uh, run this binary, for example, QM KVM, uh, inside GDB server and set these breakpoints. Or you can actually supply a, a script, uh, so set like various number of breakpoints. And it runs the test, uh, it interacts with the, uh, uh, with, uh, with the, with the QMU. And once the uh, breakpoint is reached, it notifies you on the screen and gives you command how to access the, uh, the GDB. And you can interact with it. You can 
do your work, you can modify the code, you modify the variables, or see the variables, and return back while the test is running, which means it's still interacting with, with your machine. So this is, this is pretty neat feature. And last feature I want to talk about is job reply. And that's basically what you expect. You just specify the job ID. Uh, the thing is that if you specify that like in a month, and like all configuration changed and everything changed, it still remembers everything, uh, including parameters and uh, configuration. And you can, of course, specify just, OK, I, I just want to replay uh, that, but replay only the parts which, which failed. So I can see I, I don't need to execute everything. Or you can uh, replay everything, but change the parameters, of course. Uh, that is, that's very briefly about Avocado. There are like more supports, like in-test support for GDB, uh, without the need to like, uh, do manually the pipes and uh, everything. So uh, we can meet, actually, afterwards if, if you want to, if you're interested. Uh, anyway, uh, now it's time for questions. So uh, Yash or me. Yes, if you talk about this, yeah. Uh -huh. So do you have some experience with running it on uh, other operating system than Linux? Uh, we explore this, the possibilities to run it on Windows, if you talk about this. There are like three or four modules which does not work, so you can't run it. But it's not that hard to make it work. It will, it's just that we don't uh, need it uh, right now. But if, if, that, uh, if that changes, we can actually make it work. Yeah? Uh, that in the background, in the back, the white guy, yeah. Uh, so uh, when you put the list of the test what you need to start, uh, it's possible to uh, put there also some dependencies if uh, this test fail uh, the main uh, group of the... Uh, not right now. We, we had a request for something like that, uh, but we don't support it like right now. Like the way we solve, like I solved it, for example, I, I'm running my small CI, uh, is that I used uh, pipelines in Jenkins Job Builder. Like, not Jenkins Job Builder, but in Jenkins, so, sorry. Uh, yeah, and there was another question, yes? So, two questions. First of all, you see, your expectation that people will write tests in this, or in Pytest on Node, and this will wrap it then? Uh, our expectation is uh, that you can do actually whatever you want. Uh, the thing is, if you write it in uh, PY unit test or, or just simple test uh, and anything else, you don't get all the benefits. So you can't actually use, for example, a GDB run binary because we don't know when you run this. Uh, but you can use it as a runner or you can use it as a tool. So you can use uh, our tests. So eventually you should move to our format. And we provide, for example, even like wrapper for, for services. So you don't need to care whether you have system uh, D or init 5 uh, or whether you have RPMs or, or uh, apt, yum or apt. Uh, so yes, eventually you, you may want to invest the time and learn about our native format. And my second question is, did developers actually write tests in Linux? Because one thing I see the hardest is actually making developers write tests. The point is, uh, this is inspired from Virtest, of course. And uh, well, over the years, it was hard to set a Virtest. But then uh, Lucas wrote a small script, which was just, OK, run this, and it ran the Virtest. And ever since then, we got some contribution from, uh, from actual developers. Uh, even, uh, like, I had slides for, for different conference, and I, I put 13 most active members uh, of contributors of Avocado, uh, of, oh, Avocado VT, but it's inherited from Virtust. And there is Eduardo, who is, uh, who is a developer, uh, and not, uh, not QE or, or any, uh, any test writer. And Paolo of, uh, also, like, contributes a lot. Uh, and others like because it's very easy to start with. That that was our point. It has to be easy to start with, so not only QA uses it. Uh, so I know I don't work yet, but I would just like to add in here. So when uh, when this when he had this talk at QE camp, which was the internal Red Hat event, I was in the audience. A lot of auto test users sh showed up, and their main concern was that with auto test you had to deploy the server and then the client, and then you had to run the test, which was the issue. So with Avocado, you can just do yum install Avocado and run the test. And that's what it is all about, basically. So if you're a developer, you don't need a big setup like QA. You can just do yum install and run your test. And the test is supported by mm -hmm. QA. So when it passes here, it passes there. So it's, it's, it's just making testing easier for developers. Yeah.
me just boot a virtual machine. That's as simple as this. Oh, OK, it's not as simple as that. <laughs> Never mind. Oh, yeah. Sorry, that's a libvirt issue. Uh, it changed my permissions. Yeah, right. Of course. Yes, it changed my permissions. Sorry. But I can, I can show you, uh, for example, a GDB support. Uh, I run a double free bina uh, binary, which maybe does something nasty based on the name. Like, feel free to ask questions. I'm just, you know, showing this. So th this is how actually a GDB feature wo f f works like. It, it breaks. And I can, like, boo there. I can list the code, and you can see, OK, it does double free. <laughs> oh, yeah. So we can see that it, it actually does dub double free. So I can actually skip the next free. And it exited normally. Oh, sorry. Uh, then I need to disconnect. And it proceeds, proceed, and it errors because normally it should uh, it should fail, right? But but the binary did not fail. That's the point, actually. If if I did not skip the uh, second free, it would it would have passed. Uh, what do you mean by that? Uh, I mean, uh, I, I shown you the results here, and if I go go upper, then there are all results. Okay, so you store it in, in hard disk. Yes, in hard disk uh, locally, and then you have avocado push pull uh, where you can push them to the uh, central uh, avocado server. Or basically, we say it's easier to send it by email if if you want to, or, or report a bugzilla. Uh, we left this on, uh, up to the users because we do have the sub, uh, server sub part where, where, where you can push it, pull it. Uh, but apart from that, uh, we believe that there are other software. Like you can use whatever you want, right? It, it's just files. Uh, I mean, rerunning job because uh, I mean, job is the. But what gives you the list? Like, uh, use and, uh, I I uh, I can run like bin through. Oh, run. Okay, uh, I I specify them as arguments. Yes. Okay, well, I do it in Jenkins, for example. And the developers, or? I mean, you specify those, those arguments in Avocado. And uh, for example, we go one year uh, in the future. But you want to go back uh, when what was run? Okay. Uh, I, I think I, I know what you mean. So when I look at these results, you want to know what, what was executed. Yeah. And uh, I want to run them. You, so you look at the job log, and there is the command line, and you see that I run uh, PowerPC64 boot, for example. Okay. Okay. Oh. Oh, yeah. yeah, probably I'm missing something. Sorry. <laughs> so any, any other questions? Yes. Uh, are, you, are you going to have a stable version of Fedora? <laughs> uh, all tracking of or whatever? Uh, that's a good point. Yes, we plan that, definitely. Uh, the thing is that right now it's, you know, it's not the early stage, but it's still quite, uh, it's still not a re really 1.0. Let me put it this way. I mean, I'm running it for more than half a year in CI without need to change anything. If you keep 
in since the master branch, it, it usually works. Uh, and we release every three, three to four weeks a new version. And again, if you, if you keep the same version in since and you don't use plugin, older plugin and newer version of, of the runner, it should work. Uh, we improved the, the CI, like, like autotest was broken from time to time, we improved the CI, so it should not happen that often. But it's still not 1.0 version. Yes. Okay, so if you want to meet us, uh, we can meet outside of this room. Thank you.